September 27th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapter 7 and 8 from the Old Testament. The Lord said to Jeremiah, Stand in the gate of the Lord's temple and proclaim this message. Listen, all you people of Judah who have passed through these gates to worship the Lord. Hear what the Lord has to say. The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, Change the way you have been living and do what is right. If you do, I will allow you to continue to live in this land. Stop putting your confidence in the false belief that says, We are safe. The temple of the Lord is here. The temple of the Lord is here. The temple of the Lord is here. You must change the way you have been living and do what is right. You must treat one another fairly. Stop oppressing foreigners who live in your land, children who have lost their fathers, and women who have lost their husbands. Stop killing innocent people in this land. Stop paying allegiance to other gods. That will only bring about your ruin. If you stop doing these things, I will allow you to continue to live in this land, which I gave to your ancestors as a lasting possession. But just look at you. You are putting your confidence in a false belief that will not deliver you. You steal, you murder, you commit adultery. You lie when you swear on oath. You sacrifice to the god Baal. You pay allegiance to other gods whom you have not previously known. Then you come and stand in my presence in this temple I have claimed as my own and say, We are safe. You think you are so safe that you go on doing all those hateful sins. Do you think this temple I have claimed as my own is to be a hideout for robbers? You had better take note. I have seen for myself what you have done, says the Lord. So go to the place in Shiloh where I allowed myself to be worshipped in the early days. See what I did to it because of the wicked things my people Israel did. You also have done all these things, says the Lord, and I have spoken to you over and over again, but you have not listened. You have refused to respond when I called you to repent. So I will destroy this temple which I have claimed as my own, this temple that you are trusting to protect you. I will destroy this place that I gave to you and your ancestors, just like I destroyed Shiloh. And I will drive you out of my sight just like I drove out your relatives, the people of Israel. Then the Lord said, As for you, Jeremiah, do not pray for these people. Do not cry out to me or petition me on their behalf. Do not plead with me to save them, because I will not listen to you. Do you see what they are doing in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? Children are gathering firewood, fathers are building fires with it, and women are mixing dough to bake cakes to offer to the goddess they call the Queen of Heaven. They are also pouring out drink offerings to other gods. They seem to do all this just to trouble me. But I am not really the one being troubled, says the Lord. Rather, they are bringing trouble on themselves to their own shame. So the Lord God says, My raging fury will be poured out on this land. It will be poured out on human beings and animals, on trees and crops, and it will burn like a fire which cannot be extinguished. The Lord said to the people of Judah, The Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, You might as well go ahead and add the meat of your burnt offerings to that of the other sacrifices and eat it too. Consider this. When I spoke to your ancestors after I brought them out of Egypt, I did not merely give them commands about burnt offerings and sacrifices. I also explicitly commanded them, Obey me. If you do, I will be your God and you will be my people. Live exactly the way I tell you and things will go well with you. But they did not listen to me or pay any attention to me. They followed the stubborn inclinations of their own wicked hearts. They acted worse and worse instead of better. From the time your ancestors departed the land of Egypt until now, I sent my servants, the prophets, to you again and again, day after day. But your ancestors did not listen to me nor pay attention to me. They became obstinate and were more wicked than even their own forefathers. Then the Lord said to me, When you tell them all this, they will not listen to you. When you call out to them, they will not respond to you. So tell them, this is a nation that has not obeyed the Lord their God and has not accepted correction. Faithfulness is nowhere to be found in it. 
These people do not even profess it anymore. So mourn you people of this nation, cut off your hair and throw it away. Sing a song of mourning on the hilltops, for the Lord has decided to reject and forsake this generation that has provoked his wrath. The Lord says, I have rejected them because the people of Judah have done what I consider evil. They have set up their disgusting idols in the temple, which I have claimed for my own and have defiled it. They have also built places of worship in a place called Topheth in the valley of Ben-Hinnom so that they can sacrifice their sons and daughters by fire. That is something I never commanded them to do. Indeed, it never even entered my mind to command such a thing. So watch out, says the Lord. The time will soon come when people will no longer call those places Topheth or the Valley of Ben-Hinnom, but they will call that valley the Valley of Slaughter, and they will bury so many people in Topheth that they will run out of room. Then the dead bodies of these people will be left on the ground for the birds and wild animals to eat. There will not be any survivors to scare them away. I will put an end to the sounds of joy and gladness or the glad celebration of brides and grooms throughout the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. For the whole land will become a desolate wasteland. The Lord says when that time comes the bones of the kings of Judah and its leaders the bones of the priests and prophets and of all the other people who lived in Jerusalem will be dug up from their graves. They will be spread out and exposed to the sun, the moon, and the stars. These are things they adored and served, things to which they paid allegiance, from which they sought guidance and worshipped. The bones of these people will never be regathered and reburied. They will be like manure used to fertilize the ground. However, I will leave some of these wicked people alive and banish them to other places. But wherever these people who survive may go, they will wish they had died rather than lived, says the Lord who rules over all. The Lord said to me, tell them, the Lord says, do people not get back up when they fall down? Do they not turn around when they go the wrong way? Why then do these people of Jerusalem continually turn away from me in apostasy? They hold fast to their deception. They refuse to turn back to me. I have listened to them very carefully, but they do not speak honestly. None of them regrets the evil he has done. None of them says, I have done wrong. All of them persist in their own wayward course, like a horse charging recklessly into battle. Even the stork knows when it is time to move on. The turtle dove, swallow, and crane recognize the normal times for their migration, but my people pay no attention to what I, the Lord, require of them. How can you say we are wise? We have the laws of the Lord. The truth is, those who teach it have used their writings to make it say what it does not really mean. Your wise men will be put to shame. They will be dumbfounded and be brought to judgment. Since they have rejected the word of the Lord, what wisdom do they really have? So I will give their wives to other men and their fields to new owners. For from the last important to the most important of them, all of them are greedy for dishonest gain. Prophets and priests alike all practice deceit. They offer only superficial help for the hurt my dear people have suffered. They say everything will be all right, but everything is not all right. Are they ashamed because they have done such disgusting things? No, they are not at all ashamed. They do not even know how to blush. So they will die just like others have died. They will be brought to ruin when I punish them, says the Lord. I will take away their harvest, says the Lord. There will be no grapes on their vines. There will be no figs on their fig trees. Even the leaves on their trees will wither. The crops that I gave them will be taken away. The people say, why are we just sitting here? Let us gather together inside the fortified cities. Let us at least die there fighting since the Lord our God has condemned us to die. He has condemned us to drink the poison waters of judgment because we have sinned against him. We hoped for good fortune, but nothing good has come of it. We hoped for a time of relief, but instead we experienced terror. The snorting of the enemy's horses is already being heard in the city of Dan. The sound of the neighing of their stallions causes the whole land to tremble with fear. They are coming to destroy the land and everything in it. They are coming to destroy the cities and everyone who lives in them. The Lord says, yes, indeed, I am sending an enemy against you. 
that will be like a poisonous snakes which cannot be charmed away and they will inflict fatal wounds on you then i said there is no cure for my grief i am sick at heart i hear my dear people crying out throughout the length and breadth of the land they are crying is the lord no longer in zion is her divine king no longer there the lord answers why then do they provoke me to anger with their images, with their worthless foreign idols? They cry, harvest time has come and gone and the summer is over, and still we have not been delivered. My heart is crushed because my dear people are being crushed. I go about crying and grieving. I am overwhelmed with dismay. There is still a medicinal ointment available in Gilead. There is still a physician there. Why then have my dear people not been restored to health? God, it's, it's difficult doing the research on some of the things that happen in the Old Testament. I guess it would be similar to people looking at the atrocities of war, um, especially some of the terrorist pieces that we go through today. But I was just reading when he was talking about the Valley of Slaughter, I was just reading about uh, an archaeology dig where they uncovered thousands and thousands of bodies of sacrificed children. Um, and we know that back then it was very common for them to sacrifice the firstborn child to one of these many gods who required a child to be sacrificed. And, and you say in here... I, it never even entered my mind to command such a thing. How could I command you or even request that you kill something that I love so very much? And as I thought of that image of body after body after body of thousands of dead children stacked, stacked high sacrifices to gods, I thought about what else does that look like in our lives? And I, I happen to live by a, just around the corner from a metal recycling place. And stacked higher than most of the buildings around here is tons and tons of metal. And if you look close, um, you'll see tons of things like TV sets and cars. And they kind of remind me a little bit of the bodies of children stacked on top of each other. Um, given over to gods. And I, I think of the TVs and the fancy cars and all the other things that we bring into our life that are for our gods um, for our idols in our life for the things that keep us apart away from you keep us distracted from just living a life fully for you god i think about relationships i've had that have distracted me sometimes for short amounts of time sometimes for long amounts of time away from your plans for me. I think of all the things in my life that have taken up that valuable time that should have been all yours in the first place. Uh, we have everything so upside down and backwards, God. We live our lives and then as we see fit, anything that we have left over, we kind of toss your way. And we really need to live our lives the opposite way where you come first and foremost. You are the big thing in our life. And then as we possibly have time, we can add in some of those, those other things. And not in a way that allows them to become idols in our life, but is in a way that is a balance for living here on earth. And balance doesn't mean you get 50% and my TV set gets 50% or you get 50% and, and the relationships I have here on earth get 50% or my pursuit of work gets 50% and you get 50%. That's not the balance I'm talking about here. And I, I know you wouldn't talk about it that way either. But going back to it wouldn't have even crossed your mind to ask us to sacrifice those children. Um, the reason being is, is how much you love us. So because you love us so much, you, it also would have never crossed your mind to ask us to sacrifice our time with you. Please, Janelle, sacrifice your precious time with me in working on our relationship and getting to know me better and falling more in love with me so you could go watch a sitcom on TV. I know that that also has never <laughs> entered your mind. 
Again, going back to the fact that you love me. You want what is best for me. And what is best for me is doing what I was made to do. I was talking to a friend today and he said, when are you happiest? And I said, I am happiest when I get to talk about God. I'm happiest when I see God working in people's lives. I'm happiest when I get to be around other people who are excited about God. And he says, how come? And I said, because it feels like that's what I was made to do. All these other things are just fluff and it's not really what I was made to do. So there's a level of discomfort, I guess, is the best word for it. So God, help us to focus on these priorities. Help us understand that you love us so much that you want us to truly spend time with you, talking to you through prayer, being in your word, uh, being in communities of other Christians. You really want us, because of how much you love us, to be in that healthy place. You don't want us pursuing um, and sacrificing our lives to idols um, through entertainment, through the internet, through job titles, through relationships, through uh, expensive brands of products. Whatever that looks like to us that we're sacrificing you in order to get something else that we selfishly want. Help, help show us and teach us that that's not the way we need to live. That the way that is best for us is to live a life that glorifies you, that reflects you, that worships you, and lives out the person that you originally created us to be in, in whatever aspect and gift that, that particularly looks like. I know it would never enter your mind to put me into a situation that wasn't the best possible situation for me. And I will never understand a love that is that big. But God, help me to understand it enough so that I can walk those steps that you're asking me to walk in faith. In your son's name I pray. Amen.